Hey guys, Nino Batista here. Welcome to 10 Amateur Portrait Retouching Mistakes You Should Totally Avoid. It's not about making fun of anybody. It's about you looking into yourself and seeing, are you making these mistakes and others? And if you are, you probably should try to get away from them because you're doing the standard amateur mistake. I'll be the first to tell you that I've been guilty of all 10 in my day, and that's fine. We all have to start somewhere, right? So let's get right to it to number one. When you boost color crazily across the entire image, you start bringing out flaws, especially in skin tone. Go easy on saturating color and find better ways to do it than just sliding that slider up. Believe it or not, most images that have great sharpness came out of the camera that way. You can boost sharpness all day with lots of different methods. I know I do. To this day, I still do. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to do it with a subtle hand. Too much sharpening can look really, really corny, but it can also add unwanted noise in your image. Go easy on sharpening, especially in your raw processor. Commonly seen when you run a plugin or a filter a little too willy-nilly without being careful about it or setting your settings too high. Haloing just means that certain perimeters um, just get a little too glowing. You know, like you want to darken the background of something, of, of your portrait, you want to darken the, the sky behind him or her, and you accidentally don't do it right, and there's like a glow around your subject because the, the transition, that perimeter of the mask isn't quite right. This is a common and very specific amateur mistake we see a lot. It also happens, like I said, when you run a plugin and just trust it blindly. Fingertips, toes, feet in general, ears, noses, all of those areas tend to go pink or red on your subject. Yes, it depends on the skin tone of your subject, but at the same time, those areas tend to be different than the rest of the body. If you make those match, it just gives your shot a little bit less of an amateur feel. A photographer I respect immensely once told me, if you wanted clear, obvious, beautiful eyes in your subject, but you find yourself in Photoshop brightening the hell out of the eyes too much, you shot it wrong. You lit it wrong. 95% of the time, I don't brighten eyes or I give them a little bit of contrast. What you're after is the catch light and kind of that shiny twinkle in the eye. The electric, glowing, white parts of the eyes always makes your subject look like an alien and extremely amateur. Yeah, we've all seen the new iPhone with that fake camera blur that it does for portrait work. I know it's tempting, but if you don't get real camera blur in your shot, I strongly recommend not trying to fake it. Yes, with a monumental effort, you can fake camera blur in a way that looks natural. But usually, it's not worth it. If you want to shoot really you know, shallow depth images, shoot them that way in camera 99% of the time. It's going to be way better. And like I said, creating fake camera blur in a shot takes a lot of work. Most of the time, an amateur doesn't have that much knowledge or skill to pull it off. A classic dark vignette can look really great. Most of the time it works when there's natural lens vignette happening and it's subtle. Always keep it subtle. Too much black vignette and it's a train wreck. Most of the time, a white vignette is going to look horrible. Don't do it. There's some purposes for it here and there, but don't do a white vignette. An amateur mistake more commonly made in Lightroom because the UI of Lightroom, to me, makes it easy to just kind of sort through your images um, almost like a big batch, like a big group, laying out prints on a table and organizing. You tend to not zoom in, at least amateurs tend to not. And what happens is any manner of error can be happening in your edit and you don't realize it. A mask could be off, um, too much sharpening, you don't see it happening. Uh, an effect that you applied looks really, really bad when you zoom in and you don't realize it. In today's modern era where we post everything online, we don't realize that something might look bad printed or larger. Zoom in, whether you're in Photoshop or in Lightroom, zoom into 100% and see what your edit is doing. You may be destroying the quality of your image and you don't realize it because you're zoomed out to 15%. And finally, don't blur skin. 
It's the first line of defense that we all try. We try Gaussian blur, we mask it in, surface blur, any manner of blur, we try it. We want to have skin smoothing. Get that idea out of your head though. Smoothing. We are not smoothing. We are perfecting. We want skin texture and there's a dozen ways to go about doing it. Some tried and true skin retouching methods out there, but I guarantee you, no blur filter is ever it. There are definitely a lot more mistakes we can make and certainly I have, but those are the top 10 that I feel are most commonly made that I see most of the time when I'm online or reviewing portfolios or just browsing Instagram. Try not to make those mistakes, find ways to get around it and take that retouching to the next level. You'll be happy you did.